How to scan tickets and navigate scanning mode in Sapphire Tix. The Sapphire Tix app runs on current iOS devices, including iPhones, iPads, and iPods. Look for the blue icon with a white flame. Press that, and it takes you to the login screen, which operates in two different modes. If you see a screen like this, which is looking for a web address, email address, and password, touch the sign in, then OK. And look for Change Login Mode. It's right below the Sign In button. Press that. And change it to PIN Mode. OK. If it's only looking for the URL and a PIN or personal identification number, you're in the correct mode. The URL is probably already filled in on your device, but if not, check with your gate coordinator for the correct address. Then add your personal identification number and sign in. Your PIN might be assigned to a specific location. So when logging in, the location was already selected and you're seeing the scanning screen. If so, that's great. If not, you'll see this screen, which requires you to select the location where you'll be scanning. Let's choose Arena Back, and with that, we're now on the scanning screen. You'll be scanning tickets, which might look like this. Or maybe like this. And definitely some that look like this. That's a printed home ticket. Or you might be shown a code on a cell phone, much like an airline boarding pass. Regardless of the type of ticket, you want to scan this area, the QR code. Keep the ticket at least a foot away from the device. Then tap the screen, and you'll see the target area outlined in a green box. Get the QR within the box, and you've just scanned a ticket. This screen shows success, along with the ticket code number, the type of ticket, and the date it was purchased. The person with that ticket can now enter the event and you can click New Scan for the next ticket. Now, if I scan the same ticket again, I'm going to get a different result. Yeah, the screen shows Denied and explains why it was denied. This was a fully redeemed code. Other reasons for getting denied are the ticket is not valid for that particular event, or the ticket's not valid for that date and or time. Since this ticket has already been redeemed, the screen shows where it was scanned and the date and time. If there's a question about whether the ticket's still valid, it's possible you may have scanned it twice back to back. Just look at that date and time to see if the redemption was prior to the current time, or click the backwards arrow down at the bottom to check the scan history. You can see all the details for your recent scans. If there's still an issue, please check with your gate coordinator. Oh, and the QR doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. It can be completely upside down, in fact or even sideways. It just needs to be clear. And one more thing, if you need to make a scan and you've ended up on some other screen, press the camera icon down at the bottom and you'll be back in action. If the ticket you're presented is tattered or torn, like this one, yeah, I think that was in somebody's back pocket, which uh, is challenging. You can try and smooth it out, and try and scan it. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's that's never going to scan. Yep, here we can see why. The QR code was smeared. So uh, regardless of the reason, if the scanner can't read the code, you can check the ticket for a couple of fallback details. If you can read the code number right here, right below the QR, you can enter that right here, where it says Enter Code Manually. It could be various links, and it may include letters and numbers. Or you can look for the order number. In this case, let's see on this ticket, order number 2527. So I'm going to go to order lookup and punch in 2527. And it finds the order. All we have to do is click on it, and you'll see all the tickets that were associated with that particular order. In this case, we got three tickets here. If I happen to have like three people standing in front of me and they're all ready to go in the gate, probably they belong to those three tickets. So you can just hit redeem all and they're good to go. But if you kind of have a mismatch of people and tickets, read a little closer to see what they purchased and redeem only the ticket that's needed immediately. They may have tickets for access on different dates or different types of tickets, which they're not using at the moment. So you just want to select one at a time and redeem it. Now, 
Notice when we go back here, back to the order number, you can also search by name or email. So if a ticket is totally unreadable, meaning I wouldn't be able to read not only the QR code, but either of those other two codes that we looked up a moment ago, or if someone gets to the gate and realizes they left their tickets in the car, you can just search for part of a name or email. It doesn't have to be the full name or address. Since we're using a demo site right now, let's search for a purchase made by someone at Sapphire. I'll put in um, fire and search for that. And it finds several results here. So maybe this is the correct one. You can click on it and you can redeem it just like you did the others. There's one more icon at the bottom that you might need to use. It's the gear or wheel in the bottom right corner. This takes you to the app settings. At the top, it shows your login name and the option to turn on the camera flash, which you won't need to use unless you're in extreme darkness. The next box allows you to change the current location. You can click that. Uh, this may be necessary if your gate coordinator asks you to change uh, spots where you're working. Just press the location and select a different entry point. Below that is a box which allows you to change the operation mode of the app. Press that and you'll see several options. If someone has turned on sales mode, the app will display a dollar sign at the bottom of the screen. Okay, and if they happen to be in that mode, you'll see something that looks like this. Now, now this is only intended for ticket sales and doesn't allow you to scan. So just go back into the settings and switch the mode back to scan. You'll also find the order lookup option here, and it's the same thing that you saw on the scanning screen. And then you might also see an option for connecting to a printer. If it's not there, don't worry. And if it is there, that's covered in another video. Finally, you'll find the log out button. If each user has a unique personal identification number, you'll need to log out when your shift is over so the next person can log in with their PIN. A few tips for you. The device should be limited to either Wi-Fi or cellular data as determined by your gate coordinator. Leaving both networks on can slow down the processing and in turn slow down entry at your gate. To check that setup, swipe up from the bottom of the screen. This device is set for Wi-Fi, and currently the cellular connection is turned off. While we're here, a couple of things to help you conserve the battery. Keep your screen brightness as low as possible. That's adjusted right here. And keep the volume as low as possible, too. I had it maxed out so that you could hear the sounds while we were scanning. Another way to save the battery is by switching the device off when there's a substantial lull in gate activity. To turn it back on, just click the home button a couple of times. It'll take you right back to where you were. Finally, this device may look like a phone, but while running Sapphire Ticks, treat it as if it were strictly a scanner. Any other use will shorten the battery life. And that wraps up how to scan tickets and navigate the scanning mode in Sapphire Ticks.